Welcome to the Sage Thought Leadership Podcast, building experiences that connect, remove friction, and deliver insights. Well, hi, everyone, and welcome to our podcast. I'm Ed Kless, and I am live at Sage Transform 2022 in Orlando, Florida. My guest today is Mike Walton, who is the Vice President at Sentient Solutions. Welcome to the Sage Thought Leadership Podcast. Thank you, Ed. I'm happy to be here. Very excited. Well, first off, Mike, why do you do what you do? You know, first of all, you know, I've been in the CPA industry for quite some time as a director of business development and marketing with several different firms. You know, I've seen firms struggle. I've seen firms struggle to grow. And what I do for my company is really allows firms to grow quickly. And it really sort of it really sort of removes some of the obstacles to that growth because growing is a challenge and growing costs a lot of money. Our solution, we think, really sort of alleviates some of those challenges and you're able to grow quickly and add that capacity that much quicker. And, and growth is, is important, but we have to be careful that you, you can't grow for growth's sake either. That's a big challenge, right? right? I mean, if you, I could come in and double revenue, but then put you out of business doing it. But see, that's the issue. That's the issue here. Y- y- yes, everybody is poised with growth. You know, if you want to take a look, for example, client accounting services, CPA firms that offer client accounting services or outsourced accounting, whatever they want to call it. The numbers across the country from a growth perspective are astronomical. You're talking about 20, 25% growth, right? But these firms can't do it because the capacity isn't there. So what you're talking about is, yes, I can go in tomorrow and bring that business in the door, but who's going to do it? And you're right. And so all of a sudden, at that point in time, you have a pretty significant problem. So what we talk about is really that opportunity to build that capacity. That's crucial. So expand on that. So because this is a this is a big problem, especially in I think CPA firms, but maybe it's probably beyond beyond that. All problems usually are. Uh, but I've heard this, and you know you can confirm or deny this. There have never been more accounting graduates, people graduating with accounting degrees, but far fewer of them are going into the CPA profession. Right. And that's something that we have to square that circle. That's a huge issue, and that's an issue that really CPA firms, quite honestly, at very high levels. Um, AICPA is really struggling with this. I actually just posted some things on LinkedIn about exactly that. Mm -hmm. Why aren't people going into public? A lot of it is maybe, hey, you know what, this generation isn't isn't liking this old model of working 80 hours a week during tax season, right? These people want flexibility. They want different things, right? So these firms, a lot of traditional firms are really struggling with that. So basically, for whatever reason, Ed, you know, call it the great resignation, call it the effects of the pandemic, whatever the, whatever the, the cause is, and people are spending a great deal of money and time studying this as well, CPA firms are having a heck of a time hiring people. Mm-hmm. So I go to a lot of meetings and I talk to a lot of CPA firms and, you know, they'll stand up and you know, we'll be at a conference and they'll give a state of the firm, you know, the, the managing partner will stand up and say, here's what we're doing. 95% of the firms I hear, the, one of the top three things that come out of their mouth is staffing challenges. Okay, so whatever that is. So what we do from an outsource perspective. So outsourcing's been around forever. Everybody gets it strategically. It makes great sense. Larger firms have been doing it for decades. The big firms have been the big four have been outsourcing to India for since the 70s and 80s, right? Our company, uh, one of our offices is in Hyderabad, India. We're literally down the street from an office with 4,000 people doing nothing but tax returns for Deloitte, right? So basically what this does is this allows us to tap into that chartered accountant talent in India and place these people in a CPA firm to instantly add that capacity. So you're not having to go through the the challenge, the, 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 the juggling, and the expense of hiring people. So one of the offshoots of this, great resignation or whatever, this is a good one. These people that are looking to work at a CPA firm, they know they're in demand. So what we're hearing is, you know, someone will go out and look for a a, a tax manager level person. And that person knows he or she is in demand. So they turn around and say, well, I demand $100,000, right? 
because they know somewhere down the line they might get to that. So what outsourcing does is it allows you to add this capacity, bypass some of these staffing challenges, and also do it at significantly less cost than it would be to hire somebody. So that difference then goes straight to your bottom line. You get somebody experienced, chartered accountant, experienced accountant. The only difference is they happen to be sitting in Hyderabad, India, as opposed to Houston, Texas, or down the street. We've all just gone through the pandemic. We're all fine with remote. We all get it now, even though we might not like it. We all get it, and that's the way the world is right now. So this is just an extension on that, and it's a much simpler way for these firms to add that capacity quickly and take advantage of some of that growth. So I heard this about three, four months ago, and maybe you can confirm or deny this, but that there are more people in India familiar with the U.S. tax code than there are in the United States. I mean, if you take a look at probably total population, there's a lot of people in India. So I, I don't know that, but I will tell you that the people in India... They love working with U.S. companies. They take it upon themselves to learn about U.S. companies. We have a lot of we have a lot of people on our staff that used to work with Deloitte or BDO or or Ian Ernst and Young, right, in in India. And a lot of these people worked on U.S. clients, right? Actually, some of our leadership in in Hyderabad come from that world as well. So yes, they understand that it's good for their career, these people in India, to understand U.S. tax law, you understand U.S. GAAP and FASB, and understand how U.S. companies work. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it, and it's also a bit of a prestige to be involved with a company like mine that works with U.S. companies because they know from a career perspective, it's very, very uh, positive and beneficial. And, Mike, we have an exit question that we ask all of our guests, and that Uh-oh. is, who is a hero of yours, and why are they a hero? Well, so through my muddled history, it started out, even though I got into sales and, and marketing, I was a history major at, uh, at heart. My degree was in history. And, you know, one person I always admired just because of what he went through in a very uh, uh, dramatic and, and scary time of the world is General Omar Bradley. First of all, he lived until I think he's like 104 years old, so I give him credit for that. But just, you know, having to deal with a personality like Patton, you know, having to serve, you know, having to take Eisenhower's ideas and really bring them down to a tactical, you know, level, you know, with these, with, a, you know, Mark Clark and General Patton, and, you know, all, you know, you know, you know, uh, you know, France and Mark Clark in Italy and having to deal and manage that. You want to talk about leadership. I mean, that kind of stuff, especially when bombs are being dropped and people are dying, that's a pretty impressive, uh, yeah. So someone like that, uh, I admire, and and I I think if we read more and learn more about, you know, some of these people that are in this position in dire, dire circumstances, I think uh, we may be all a little bit better for it. And lastly, Mike, how can somebody get a hold of you? Somebody can get a hold of me very easily. Uh, My email is Mike. Dot Walton at sentientsolutions.io. You're also welcome to reach out via LinkedIn. Um, uh, you can go to our website, which is sentientsolutions.io, and you can basically fill out a form if you want a little bit more information or you want to talk to somebody, and I'll be more than happy to reach out. All right. Mike Walton, VP of Growth at Sentient Solutions, thanks so much for being a guest on the Sage Thought Leadership and Podcast. I appreciate it. It was great fun. Review and subscribe by searching your podcast player of choice for Sage Thought Leadership Podcast.